Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. The date continues and we have an amazing man in the studio, as I keep on saying, because he is. That is no other than Paul Ukonu, the founder of The 300 Project, a project that is looking at eradicating modern day slavery in Nigeria and not just in Nigeria, but also across Africa. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Very Great. good. Great. Thank you yeah. so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having now, me. Now, on Tuesday, we had the World Day Against Human Trafficking, and that was such a huge day. So I said, you know what? We need to discuss this this week, and who better to have on the show than you? Yeah. I understand that you're running a project called The 300 Project, so I'd like you to give us a bit of information about that. All right. Um, the 300 Project is um, it's an art project. I, I always uh, tell people this is how I explain it. Um, my voice is not strong enough as an individual to get to the people and policies and uh, the AUs and our government. These are the people that matter in the project, right? And when I have been concerned about the issue of trafficking for a while now, and anytime I tweet about it or put it on my Instagram, it just goes. So I said, you know, um, how about, you know, doing a project, a project that can get people's attention. And I came up with the idea of shooting 300 um, women. And with this, People love art a lot. With this, we can get attention, and finally, we can be able to, to yeah. address the people about trafficking. Um, it's, um, I changed my mind about trafficking because um, initially, we always thought, yeah, is it not people that want to go out? You know, it's always the impression we have. You know, but when I went deep into it, I realized it's, it's, it's deeper than that. It, it has a lot to do with poverty. There's so much that surrounds the, the issue of trafficking. And I said to myself, it's time to do something about it. Absolutely. Now, yeah. I understand that in the course of you organizing this project, you've also had the opportunity to get a first-hand view on people's experiences in terms of trafficking. Give mm. us a story, Paul. Um, there's a story about a girl. Her name is Sandra. Um, to be honest, I don't know whether she gave me her real name. Uh, you never know. But yeah, that's what she said, Sandra. And she's, uh, she's 17. I met her last year, um, a 17-year-old girl that was trafficked when she was 16. Mm -hmm. And she was told that she was going to walk. She was in secondary school. And a lady approached her and told her she was going to walk. You know, so they're taking her to London. That was the, the idea. And you know, illiteracy is a very bad thing. You know, she didn't know what you know, she was getting into. Obviously, her mom too, um, I believe. And then they took her you know, through, the, um, through the Libyan route, which is the deadliest in the world. You know, um, she gave me the experience of how she was, you know, raped in Niger um, when they were uh, stopped at the desert, you know, uh, slavery in Libya. There's a particular community, I think it's in the east, mm. um, where they were kept for almost six to seven months. And finally, she earned her freedom somehow after paying, you know, you know how she must have paid. I don't think it's something we should talk about. Yeah, and I think it's nasty. You know, we, we can't have this happen to our people. You know, and the more it keeps happening, the more we damage our reputation, even mm -hmm. you know, around the world, it damages its people. So I think the Nigerian government organized with the IOM and they brought her in, they brought her back. Obviously, she's psychologically damaged. And after I spoke to her, they said she's, you know, after a while when she came back, she wasn't eating, she wasn't doing anything. The mom felt bad, you know, that she couldn't stop it. And to be honest, they give her, you know, certificates to prove that she's gotten admission or she's gotten a job out there. Oh, you know, so with that kind of fraud, it, it's, it's difficult for some people to know exactly what they're going to face. I mean, we might say, you know, we've been doing campaigns, but has it gotten to the right people? Do they really understand the gravity of what they're doing? Why do they want to go? Mm. So it's, it, it's a very, very deep issue. I mean, there's another story about a guy who has a cut on his head. You know, um, he, he was caught in Libya. You know, uh, they shoot these guys anyhow. You know, Libya doesn't have a government right now. So, you know, people, you can't account for anything that's going on in Libya. So I think it's really, really nasty. And that's just one side of trafficking. Tell us about the other side. The other side is even deeper in Nigeria itself. You know, a lot of uh, forced labor, you know, you go out there and you see children. Now our head is very deep in, in the uh, Adamawa, all those regions where they have huge farms. Mm. Um, obviously, I'll be going there very soon. Mm. Um, you have these children that will be organized in communities like, you know, seven, ten-year-old kids. They'll organize like 100 or 200 and get them to the farms to start working. Yeah. Um, I think that's child uh, trafficking because, I, I mean, you, 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 can't, you can't do that, you know. These kids do not know anything. They don't know their left from their right. I'm not saying children should not to mm. an extent, you know, help their parents. But when a community leader thinks he can 
uh, get underage kids to start working forcefully so that their parents can, you know, basically stay in a particular place. It, it, it becomes, it's something that the government needs to look into. But Paul, happens, this, yeah. is where, this is where I have an issue. Yeah. It's a clear problem that we're looking at today. It's mm. also said that 71% of traffic persons today are also women and girls. Mm. Why is it so easy for this to continue? Why have we seen no enforcement around this? I, I, think, I think we don't care as Nigerians. I, I was speaking to um, an actress, uh, an actor, uh, Michelle Dede. Mm. You know, while I was telling her about the 300 project, you know, and, I'm, and I was saying that why... Why can these things just happen and it's now normal? She said something, and, and that's when it beat me. She said, we have become numb to pain in Nigeria. You know, we talked about the tanker, the explosion. Then she said, trust me, after three days, Nigerians will forget about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've gone through so much pain that we think it's now normal. Even the agencies, you know, I mean, um, NAPTIP is, you know, uh, they're trying, but we don't want to keep saying they're trying. Mediocrity, it's Is time. it that they don't have the manpower, the capital? Where is the issue? I, I think they don't have the capital, to be honest with you. I don't think this is a priority for the government. Let's be very honest. Do we see anything in the 2018 budget with regards to this problem? No. No. It's terrible. You know, I've tried to look for it. It's confusing. You know, um, for the 300 project we sent, um, there's a lady in Kuo, um, you know, She's an artistic director on the project. Uh, we sent her, she, she went actually voluntarily to Edo State. They had this Edo State task force mm -hmm. for trafficking and all that. So she went there. And um, she listened to the EU, the market women, what they had to say. Then again, we didn't hit the right point. Why are these people leaving? What can we do? We need to start talking solutions. We already know the problem. What's the solution? Okay, let's get on to the solutions. Yes. What exactly are the aims and objectives of the 300 project? Yes, um, first, uh, first things first. What we want to do, uh, the 300 project, the idea for it is to raise you know, awareness and you know, have a strong voice. For me, I always say this. If I try to connect to the DG of NAPTIP or the AU or the European Commission, um, the European Union or the UN, it's difficult as an individual. Who are you? That's, that's how, you know, uh, we are in the world. Uh, but because I'm running a project, the 300 project, it gives me a stronger voice. So it was easy for me to connect more with these agencies that matter. So I had a meeting, a 15, 20 minutes meeting with the NAPTIP uh, DG, and we, you know, we had a conversation about trafficking. I asked her a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. She told me what they're doing, told me about the helpline they're bringing out now. I think it's, uh, it's soon going to be released. And, you know, that's, that's the aim, to be able to, 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 to give the 300 project, a strong uh, voice so we can talk to government, you know, the agencies and influence these policies. Mm. Okay, interesting. Mm. On, on World Day Against Human Trafficking, I mm. saw a report that came out and Godwin Obasaki, the governor of Edo State, had said that although they have their task force yeah. in Edo State, he said it's now time for the global community to get involved and help us because this is a global issue. What are your views on that? Um, let, let's do our best first. Stop, stop this global community mm. thing. We know the issues. We know where these things are happening. We need to take responsibility first. Do you think the calling on the globe mm. has just become some sort of way to alleviate the pressure from oneself? Exactly. That's what it is. That's what it is. You see, yeah? Um, let's, let's make it raw now. How do these guys go out? You're in Nigeria, right? We, have, we are yeah. supposed to have a border. Do you know the thousands of vehicles that pass you know, on the way, somebody should stop them. And I'm trying to um, get to see the, uh, the DG for uh, immigration. I need to ask some questions, you know, very obvious questions. Mm -hmm. how, how do they get, we know where they pass through mm -hmm. and we all know how our borders are. It's a particular place they go through. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a strange place. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't jump out of a helicopter. They don't cross Nigeria, <laughs> you know, in a deep way. Yeah. They basically drive through the border. Yeah. And I can tell you where they get to and pay. So what are we talking about here? If, if you want to solve the problem, solve the problem first. Leave mm. this global. They have their issues and they're trying to fight it from their end. So, you know, they've started their walls and everything. I was watching a documentary uh, recently, um, A Way We Are, you know, mm. very, you know, amazing documentary. And he, he talked about the borders are now, they're trying to also help themselves. You know, the Europeans are under pressure, you know, so they're doing their own. Do your own. Make sure your people don't leave. What are the policies you're putting in place? Yeah. I'll give you an example. Um, I was talking to a lady, uh, Chinwe. She's, she's running uh, something very strategic. I think that's the best idea I've had um, uh, to help, you know, as part of the solution. And 
obviously it's like the, uh, I don't know whether she wants me to say publicly, but yeah, mm. I, I would say, she said, people want to travel and they will do anything sometimes. And sometimes you empower people, you think you're empowering them and you're just empowering them You're just them giving to them, yeah. Mm -hmm. So she was talking about running, you know, kind of like a signature project where, um, you know how it is in, in, in the UAE, you know, Arab communities where, you know, people from Asia will come and walk for like a month or two months, you know, all these uh, menial jobs and then go back, you know, that kind of thing. So they want to create something that can help these people. Okay, you know, we have 5,000 people here. Let's give them something to do. And after that, they can come back just to experience. Maybe it's a mentality issue. Maybe we need to show them that, see, this is where you are going to. It's not that deep. You know, if, if you build yourself in Nigeria, you can succeed. But I think the biggest problem is poverty. Absolutely. And we are now the number one country in the world with the most citizens living in extreme poverty. These are some serious issues that we're looking at. Mm. Now, where I see a thin line, and I think there's something that we need to clarify when it comes to trafficking, is this. In 2016, 36,000 people left Nigeria and moved over to Italy. Mm. Now, from that number, of course, these are people who went by will, okay? Yeah, yeah. What if you go somewhere by your own will, but when you get there, you were forced into something? Is that still trafficking? Yes, and that's okay. what I tell people. I, you know, I had this argument with someone, um, I'll mention a name, mm. and she said, Paul, you can't expect me to support people who go deliberately. And I'm like, I'm sorry. If I illegally want to go to Italy and they stop me over at Libya, it's slavery. If you force me to do something against my will, it's slavery, whether we like it or not. You know, it also kind of shocks me that no one is speaking about the fact that we still don't have the names of the Nigerian girls who were found dead at sea last year on the deadliest routes in the world. And this brings me to a serious issue that I think we need to discuss, which is the fact that data collection in Nigeria is seemingly non-existent. And data collection is something that we need in order for us to overcome the problem that we have with human trafficking. Mm. Where are you trying to get at in terms of that? Um, I, as for the, the people who have died, mm. you know, um, it's, it's shocking that we can't account for these people. You know, uh, they were buried in, in, in Italy, right? Mm. Uh, I don't know, you have, that's just the one we've heard about. Yeah. You know, there's a lot going on right, there, right now, and I think that we should do better. You know, we, we started, I think some years ago, they said they would start collecting data. We, we've been on this for more than 10 years, and that's why, you know, sometimes you just wonder whether we're going, you know, forward. We have nothing. You know, statistics is zero. And, you know, recently we had mm -hmm. another issue, and, you know, um, this one will bring numbers, that these are the number of people in Libya, we don't know. Shocking, don't know. It, shocking. It, trust me, I think it's three times what they say right now. But what we do know is that you have some amazing and very exciting events lined up. So tell yes. us a bit about what's going on this Saturday and also future projects for the 300 project. Um, all right, so we're supposed to shoot the uh, 300 project, that, the main photo shoot, the, the arts project mm. on the 28th of July. Um, due to some uh, reasons, we have you know the nap tape. We wanted some uh, endorsements, uh, basically. So um, we were asked to just move it slightly um, to keep that momentum going. I don't want people's minds to come down. We're still, you know, gingered. We said we're going to do a walk, and that walk is going to happen this Saturday, 7 a.m. Um, so we're trying to get um, strong, influential women to come, you know, and partake in the walk. So they are all going to wear black, and we're going to march on a straight line in a place that looks like a desert. And we're all going to hold hands together and say no to trafficking. It's a different style, and we want to uh, send this message across to, you know, uh, um, both you know locally and mm. internationally that see we're not keeping quiet. So for people out there right now who are tuning in and thinking, I want to get involved, mm. how can that happen? Um, um, I, I don't know. I, I need to say I'm sorry because we don't want. Um, it's not. It's not just. It's not a public walk where we. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I, I tell people they can send you know messages and then. Are you open to volunteers for yes. the three hundred project? Yes, I'm open to okay. volunteers. Okay. So how can people contact you to volunteer? Um, volunteers at the three hundred project dot org. Okay. Just send an email. Cool. Volunteers at the three hundred project dot org. If you are willing and interested in coming on board to eradicate trafficking with us. But tell us about the main project as well that's coming um, up. The main project is going to be very key. Um, we are uh, we're organizing women from different parts of Nigeria. We are also bringing uh, some victims of, um, of um, uh, uh, kidnap or trafficking and whatever you call it. We're bringing some Chibok girls. We are bringing some girls from Dapchi. 
you know, just to get people, you know, who have had uh, first-hand experience. There's also a girl who, you know, lost her both, you know, arms uh, to, um, you know, uh, an accident while she was uh, on the way to uh, Libya. Wow. Um, so she's going to be uh, the project, and we want to bring these people together and do this art project. Uh, they're all going to be dressed in white. It's going to be the most beautiful group photo the world has ever seen, and this will definitely be that image that would drive you know the initiative worldwide I and it's also a world-breaking project as yes, well yes and i always say that art is supposed to be uncomfortable art yeah. is supposed to be disturbing because yeah. the cause of art or the crux of the matter that we're getting at is that we need to spark a reaction in yes. some way somehow how have the response has been so far since you launched the 300 project the response is it has been amazing it's been amazing um it, it's shocking but i've gotten you know good responses from individuals Mostly, sadly, mostly, 95% women. Men, a, men, men, a, we need you to do some more. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a project that uh, focuses on the trafficking of African, young African women. But are the men not supposed to be at the forefront of this? Absolutely, and so, this is a project that is spearheaded by a man as well. Yeah. I always, this is actually an issue that I have when it comes to matters of social justice. How can we actually start encouraging, this is not to say that men don't partake, because we have a clear example sitting right here in the studio with me, yeah. but how can we also encourage more men to come on board with projects like this? Um, I think men are too, I, I don't know where we lost it. I'm sorry, Obama made a statement. You remember when he went to South Africa? He said, um, you know, we need more women because the men are beginning to disappoint me. And I actually felt that, you know, while running this project. Women, women, women. And I'm like, you know, Ramsey Noah spoke to me a while back, you know, a month ago, mm. and said, you know, why, you know, we need to make sure that the men come out. He, he was saying it. Some men feel, you know, the pain. And I tweeted about it once, and some of them were like, eh, you have not told us. I'm like, I'm, I'm supposed to tell you, you know? I, I, I don't know. I just think the men, I'm sorry, I think we've lost it. It's time, it's time to, it's time to step up. But thank you so much, Paul. This has been extremely informative. So you. share your social media handles for people to get more information before we round up. Um, all right. Uh, my social media handle is at Paul O'Connor, at Paul O'Connor anywhere, uh, Twitter, um, 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 Instagram. But you can, uh, most importantly, follow the 300 Project at the 300 Project, at the 300 Project, um, Twitter and all other platforms. Amazing. Thank yeah. you so much, Paul. Thank you so much. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.